Hi everyone, I'm Carlos Abril and here are my top 5 production essentials tips. So the first tip is listen to a lot of music. And I'm not talking about playing some new music in the background. I'm talking about actively listening to new music. So take a few minutes every day, sit down and listen to some new songs. And really think about the things that you like about the songs. Try and decompose the song into the layers that make it up. Um, so that is, maybe you're listening to a song that you like and uh, just actively think about all the instruments that are playing in that moment. So maybe there's the drums playing, there's a Rhodes on the left, there's a piano on the, on the right, there's a rhythmic guitar in the center, I don't know. But whatever it is, that will help you kind of create a mind map of how things are created in the production world of things. Um, and just in general, how your favorite songs are created in the production stage. And that just really helps you um, develop your ability to discern instruments, which is great for production because it help it would help you in your arrangements, and it just helps you overall in in being able to have a clear a more clear vision of of what you want to create as well when it comes to to the production aspect of things. That takes me to the second tip, which is learn the frequencies of your favorite sounds. So basically, from all the music that you listen to and your favorite things and, and your favorite sounds, try and know what those sounds um, are in the production world. How are they represented? And uh, by that, you know, the easiest thing to do is pull up an EQ on your favorite DAW and uh, play these sounds or play the songs or isolated, you know, sounds or whatever, and really try and look at the frequencies. So. Maybe there's a snare that you love in a particular song and you want to know how, how they kind of get that sound. Because what you want to do is with the tools that you have available, if you're not a drummer, if, if you're someone who has relies on, on your DAW because you do your music on your own in your house and you don't have many more instruments, um, and you don't, or you, don't, you just don't have some of the instruments in the song, um, you can use the tools in the DAW to try and replicate or try and get as close as possible to the sounds you like. So maybe there's a snare that you love and it's, it has a lot of warmth, but it also has a lot of top end and it just helps you uh, when visualizing these frequencies at the beginning to kind of get familiarized with, with, to kind of associate the sounds to the frequencies. And that really helps you when you really use your ears, it really also helps make that connection. I think that's, that's something I found. I found out, and and so that will make it easier for you when you when you start producing something of your own, and you want to lay some drums, and you want the drums to have a certain sound, a certain feeling that you you're uh, familiar with from songs that you like. You'll kind of be able to map those sounds into the frequencies that um, that are ideal to achieve those sounds. So that is very important. My third tip is loop some drums and experiment. So for me, something that usually works is, you know, in my mind, I, I want to make a song and the first thing that comes into my mind is the tempo. So how fast or how slow I want it. And usually I help myself by laying some drums because usually the first ideas that come to my mind are rhythmic. So, you know, maybe your idea is uh, you, you start with the melody first and, and so feel free to loop the melody first. But this is what works for me. I usually loop some drums because it just gives me a sense of the groove and the feeling of, of what I want to create. And then, you know, if you sing or if you play an instrument, grab the instrument, grab the microphone and start recording and singing different melodies, different things that come to your mind um, as those drums are getting looped. And it's very important that you just don't worry about the quality, don't worry about anything about how it's being recorded, whether you're satisfied with that, um, with actually how clean the take is. Just get the ideas down, get the melodic ideas down and um, keep doing that until you feel like you've maybe found some of the takes that you like. Maybe you've, you've tried a few different melodies and you've picked one that you, you're satisfied with. Stick to that and then start adding layers with other instruments you play or your vocals again or maybe some more percussion. Just get creative, but don't think too much about it. This is just a kind of a demo process to get you started with your main idea. And uh, yeah, that's that's the third tip. My fourth tip is record your vocals loud. So something I've learned throughout these years is that when recording vocals, I used to struggle a lot because I would record them at kind of low levels 
And so the quieter parts, when I was compressing, when I was doing some uh, automation, some volume automation, I would find that there was some inconsistency um, in the noise level of the recordings. So when I was soloing the vocals or not soloing them, but just checking them out, the quieter parts, I felt like the noise obviously was higher because I just wasn't recording loud enough. And the idea is that when, you know, when you're going to record vocals, you plug in your microphone into your interface and you're in your DAW, you open up a session and you're checking the meter, you're checking the, the volume, the peaks of your, of your singing, you're tracking it. Um, ideally, you want to sing, you want to sing the loudest parts and in generally you want to peak at like minus six, minus five dB, something like that. And the quieter parts, just as well, try and maybe get closer to the mic and just adjust your your distance to the mic accordingly so that you try and get like a similar loud level of uh, recording. Not necessarily the same, it doesn't have to be exact, but just so that your quiet parts and the loud parts of your recordings are closer to each other and it's, it's not much of a difference. And I think that that's one of the most important things for me, because that way, the noise in the recording is is way, way smaller than if, let's say, you record at a low level. And by that, I mean you sing quieter or you sing f further away from the microphone. I'm not talking about um, just putting the gain up because that always increases um, noise. I'm talking about singing louder into the microphone, trying to record at a loud level, you know, so that you have more of your voice than anything going on in the background. Because when you compress and when you do all the processing, you'll figure out that the quieter parts will be brought up. And sometimes if you really record quietly, um, the noise can really be brought up and it can be really annoying. And my fifth and final tip is do not get discouraged. Many times when trying new ideas and laying down some melodies, we feel like it's just not good enough or, you know, maybe um, you're really working hard trying to get a melody, but you just cannot seem to, to get something that you like. You, you're, you don't seem to be satisfied and that can really bring you down. But the important thing about this is to think about it as, as just another idea. Not, it's not the last great idea that you might have. Um, and uh, just think that there's just so many more ideas that can come out of your of your of your brain. There's so much that you can basically create. This is just one more idea. And so, do not be sad if something doesn't work out, or if you thought that you had the best idea, but it turns out that it's not that great. Do not get discouraged because you will be creating new ideas so much that you'll forget about previous previous ideas that you've you've done before. And the main thing. The, probably the most important thing to take out of all the production things, all the production tips that I've given is the main thing to take out of all the advice that I have, I think, is to think about this as a marathon and not a sprint. I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. It really is true. Anything that you do, anything that you try to work on, whether it's production or anything you do, it's going to be helpful, regardless of whether you think an idea that you've been working on gets nowhere, even if you haven't gotten anything done, you're actually working towards getting better at what you're doing. I can guarantee you that, you know, you don't get better by just always being successful. There's always going to be things that are going to go wrong. And if you keep going, that's what makes you improve. That's what makes you not do the things you've done wrong before. And just overall, know that, yeah, your success will come from you just trying and trying and trying new ideas. And uh, like I said, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So anything, any work that you put in will be helpful and will make you a better musician, producer, or whatever role you want to take. So yeah, that was it. I hope that you found the information useful. And uh, if you want to check out my music, go ahead and click the link in the bio. And if you want to check out my other content on social media, you can just check the bio too or search my name, Carlos Abril, on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and hopefully you see me there.